The Scientist. Intellectual superhero. Infinitely clever and charming, they dedicate their life to unraveling the complexities of the universe for the benefit of all mankind. If a scientist says it, believe it, baby. <clears throat> yeah. This is actually a pretty close approximation of the view most people have of scientists, according to the 2014 National Science Foundation report on the public perception of science and engineering. So then how can it be that on scientific issues, these same people don't trust scientists? Just 67% of Americans believe the Earth is getting warmer, and only about half of those people attribute that to human activity. Contrast that to what 97% of self-identified actively publishing climate scientists and 98% of the top 50 climate researchers say. So what's going on here, and did the people surveyed lie about trusting scientists? I don't think so. Only 62% of Americans agree that most scientists believe global warming is occurring. That's pretty much in line with the public opinion. So it would appear that all of the people who believe scientists say climate change is real believe themselves that climate change is real. The problem here might not be so much a mistrust of scientists, but misinformation about what scientists are actually saying. So what is this scientific consensus that 97% of climate researchers supposedly adhere to. That's tricky, because there isn't a president of science to declare that mighty consensus has been reached. Instead, it's really rather more unsatisfactorily wishy-washy. For the general public, and even other scientists outside of a discipline, because, remember, climate science is just as much a mystery to geneticists and pathologists as it is to economists and Tupperware salesmen. It's essentially based on the official positions of scientific organisations across the world, which in turn have independently based their conclusions from the entirety of published research. NASA, the American Medical Association, the World Health Organisation, the United Nations, the Science Council of Japan, the Russian Academy of Sciences, the French Academy of Science, the Australian Academy of Science, the Canadian Academy of Science. Every major national and international scientific organisation from here to Timbuktu agree, independently of one another, human-caused climate change is happening, whether you choose to act on it or not. In some ways, it's unfortunate that there's not any kind of metric for scientific consensus to show the public on a sliding scale just how overwhelmingly supported certain theories are. Consensus is important. It represents careful judgment from the most respected scientific institutions from all over the world, who review every scrap of data available to them and independently arrive at the same conclusion. There is no better metric for certainty. Not trusting such well-evidenced conclusions is foolish. But what about these dissenting scientists we hear so much about? Why are they being censored? They're not. They're just wrong. If there's a mathematician on TV with a PhD to their name, it's a pretty good bet that they've never published a single paper on climatology. They'll have reviewed the evidence for themselves. Non-experts telling you that 97% of experts are wrong should raise a red flag. Occasionally, however, there will be a bona fide publishing specialist voicing opposition to the position statements of scientific organisations. Scientists do have, and voice, their opinions. They do so in the discussion section of papers, in letters to journals, essays and books. But that opinion is not always based in evidence, and in rare instances can accompany some unsettling financial conflicts of interest. More on that in a future video discussing scientific fraud. A good scientist is supposed to be able to change fallacious opinions in the light of new evidence. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. Some notable characters have refused to give up pet theories and move on from their original conclusions, even when faced with overwhelming new evidence. Two excellent examples of this are Peter Duisberg and Andrew Wakefield, both of whom invested heavily in their since-dismissed notions of reality, but doubled down when evidence falsifying their conclusions was published, and continue to this day to declare their ideas scientific. Does this confuse the general public? Apparently, yes because despite ardent trust of science conceptually, 
polls of public opinion continue to show opposition and uncertainty regarding long-since-settled science issues. A 2009 survey by the American Association for the Advancement of Science shows that 76% of scientists blamed the media for this disconnect by making no meaningful distinction between well-evidenced science and weakly supported speculation. But drama gets high ratings. And intentionally or not, the news media has generated vast amounts of fake controversy because they can't help but present two sides of any argument as equal, even if that massively distorts reality. There are two important takeaways here. First, individual scientists and studies, no matter how well respected or devised, can come to the wrong conclusion or be an incomplete account of a larger picture, so considering them apart from other research is usually a very bad idea. Second, when theories are falsified, they are binned by mainstream science as the best explanation of the data, no two ways about it. Climate change, evolution, germ theory, general relativity, nothing is sacred in science. These exist as theories today because they've stood the test of decades of scrutiny and have grown to incorporate new evidence and accurately describe previously unavailable data. That's not to say that any established theory is necessarily a complete description of reality, but all theories must accurately model some part of it. But whoa, hey, wait a minute. If all this crap once held the revered status of theory, but was thrown out for being wrong, who's to say that won't happen to all these theories? Some pundits peddle this as proof that science says whatever it likes, that it's untrustworthy. Today's theory is tomorrow's pseudoscience. Up is down, black is white, nobody can ever know anything, so anyone's opinion is just as valid as another's. But there's a metric we're not being shown here, and that is weight. Most of these theories were devised so long ago, or describing such a new phenomenon, that there wasn't that much data to fit. And so long as all the data points fit, the theory remains unfalsified. But some modern heavyweight theories must describe exobytes of data from dozens of different fields, and it can get to the point where there's so much overwhelming evidence, supporters of alternative theories can earn the title of denialist. People like this tend to cling to single outdated studies which support their claims, and exclude hundreds of others which don't. One of the better analogies that I've heard for climate change denial and trust in scientific consensus relates the issue to a more familiar science, medicine. You visit your doctor and he tells you that the evidence points to cancer. But not only that, he tells you where the cancer is, what caused it, and explains that certain risk factors may make close relatives more likely to develop the disease. In shock and disbelief, you seek a second opinion. This second doctor independently confirms that yes, according to state-of-the-art medical science, you have cancer. And unless treatment is started immediately, your chances of survival could be as low as 5%. Again, you refuse to accept this. In all, you get through 32 of the world's most qualified oncologists before finally you find one who tells you, I do see evidence of cancer, but there's not conclusive evidence that it's malignant. It could be benign or even in spontaneous remission. Let's wait a few months and see if anything develops. Still unsatisfied with this notion of cancer, you seek the advice of holistic healer and self-described disbeliever in modern medicine, Andrea Beeman, who gives you yoghurt. That sounds pretty nuts to me. Individual doctors can make mistakes, and getting 32 experts to agree on the best course of treatment might be tricky, but what they're not wrong about is the existence of cancer and your odds of surviving it. Trusting in the wishful thinking of somebody who has no medical training whatsoever who says that modern medicine is a hoax, is so ill-advised that I doubt I could resist the urge to try and physically shake the silly out of anyone who suggests it. This same principle applies to all of science. One daft idiot with a PhD in mathematics doesn't affect the evidence for climate change any more than someone with a PhD in nutrition is going to rock the foundation of medical science. So we begin to get a sense of where these blurry trust lines are. Individual scientists aren't infallible, but when it comes to theories, we've got to make a decision one way or another. And when the landscape looks like this, it's a pretty damn obvious one. But of course, the media portrays everything like this. That's obviously got to stop. Misrepresenting science on issues of public health and environmental damage has real consequences. But it's not going to change anytime soon, so what's the answer? We've got to be able to tell that climate change is real but that MMR vaccines don't cause autism, while there are scientists on TV arguing that both of these things are true. 
If the media insists on unrelentingly presenting two sides of any scientific issue as fair and balanced, how is the public supposed to measure the weight of evidence behind each claim? The answer, rather satisfyingly, is this. The internet. Most people, in my estimation, have pretty good analytical skills if only they have access to clear information not littered with technical jargon, and the internet is chock full of it. There are some amazing science videos to see, and some junk too, but just like in the world of scientific research, the good stuff outnumbers the bad a hundred to one. Here on the internet, we're all part of a kind of social duplicate of scientific consensus, where we reach our own public consensus based on the quality and prevalence of clear, untechnical explanations for scientific discoveries. We do trust in scientists, but aren't so naive as to take one single source as fact. Humans are explorers. We search for truth. And when we weigh the evidence before us, the overwhelming majority will eventually arrive at the correct answer.